and Beanie fans and welcome to another episode of the Shite and Sarcasm Engineering Show sponsored by nobody. Right, <laughs> well it's sponsored by you having to watch adverts. Now if you've had to watch a SRAM advert before watching this, well this is even better. Right, now if you are not a cyclist um, or you've had your head in sand for a little while, you may or may not know that SRAM, the uh, you know the corporate hamsters that they are, are suing Princeton Carbon Works, who are a relatively small wheel manufacturer in the States. Now this presentation takes you through what is going on and what what's all about and you know what I think the likely outcome is. So I've entitled it SRAM vs Princeton Cam Works Another Shower of Prepubescent Shite brought to you with a verdict by a prepubescent engineer. That's me, that's Hambini, aged five. Now, before we move on, one of my viewers sent me some fan mail and he wrote, where's the piece of paper? Dear Hambini, I was in a gay shop in Brighton and I saw this piece of paraphernalia. Please could you put it on your hair because it reminded me of you. <sighs> so, <clears throat> Dave, if that's your real name, I've satisfied that and we'll just make the mocking even more stupid. So you're getting mocked by someone with a pink bow in their head. Right, disclaimer, if you are new here, don't believe anything that you see in this video. It is probably wrong. I am 100% pissed, <laughs> so, so, so I put vodka in here to drink, so um, yeah, take that how you will, I thought it'd be more entertaining. My qualifications, so I've got an A plus in spelling, an A plus in cooking, especially roasting, and a D in maths. And on a more serious note, this revolves around a patent, so it revolves around a US patent and a US system, so it's only as good as my research. Anyway, right, the plain tiffs. Oh, I appear to have spelt that wrong, maybe. Ah, oh, no, I've got an A plus in spelling. It's clearly spelt correctly. They are an American company. They are a huge American company, um, and they was formed by, I think, a guy called Scott Ray, and I've forgotten what the M stands for, but they were formed in, I think, the late 80s to compete with Shimano. They are known for shite engineering. They regularly get mocked. Now in group set land, they're probably third. And if sensor get their way, then um, they'll be fourth. So um, there we go. They have contributed a few of the worst bottom bracket standards in the whole wide world. Um, GXP with its rattling good fit bearing. I will put a link to that and dub which uses 29 millimeter bearing 28.99 millimeter bearings who the fuck can make a bearing to 28.99 who can make an axle to 28.99 millimeters without spending a fucking fortune there we go right and they are regularly mocked for breeding or breathing and as you know, case in point, the corporates, they pay for lots of advertorials on GCN and various other things, probably pay magazines to, you know, endorse their product. I obviously don't receive any of these funds. So in true time honored fashion, here is a gallery of their finest moments. So their corporate picture gallery. So here's a, a SRAM uh, crank, uh, another crank and a SRAM rear mech. Right, the appellant. Princeton Carbon Works. What do we know about Princeton Carbon Works? Well, let me move on. Oh, fucking hell. Is this working? Right. They are a group of rowers from Princeton University. Is the pen working? Yes, the pen is working. Right. They have 10 times more aerodynamic knowledge than me. I am obviously stupid. And... They are almost as handsome. So let's have a little look at how they look. Hopefully you can see that. This is the about page of um, Princeton Carbon Works. So we've got meet the team, Marty Crotty, Harrison Macris, and Bradley Vinst. 
So there's three people there and um, that's them. Now, what a handsome bunch they are. They are way more handsome than me. But they don't go around with pink bows in their head. Right, in their hair. Right, so that's enough about them. Now let's go back to the background of the dispute. Fuck. Is this fucking working? Right. It is about patent dispute. Now SRAM are accusing Princeton Carbon Works of infringing a patent. No, I put there, not copying. There is a big difference because some people have said that, um, uh, you know, Princeton Carbon Works are copying SRAM's wheels. I don't think that's strictly true. And reading around the literature, that doesn't seem to be the case. But in any case, here are a picture of the wheels. So this is the Princeton Carbon Works wake. Uh... Yeah, and there's equivalent, or not equivalent, but a similar SRAM Zip. So Zip is their wheel brand, 454. So just to the naked eye, they look, you know, some similarities there. Obviously, they are bike wheels. Um, and they have this sort of rippling shape. But going closer detail, there is, you know, quite a big difference, really. This is the, um, the, the Princeton Carbon Works. And this one is the Zip. Now, if you look, the uh, Princeton wheel is a sinusoidal profile. So if you rotate it forwards, if you, depending, it's irrespective of which way you mount it, it's bi-directional. The zip wheel is not. So the profile across it is like a ramp and almost a step. Right. The patent. This is the patent that SRAM have cited. Um, you can go Google it. I'll leave a link to it below. Looking at it, it was originally registered by this chap, Dimitrios Katsanis. Now, when I looked him up, it pointed to his website, Additive Engineering, based in a place called Derby, not far from Nottingham, uh, in as in Sheriff of Nottingham, as in Robin Hood, um, in Central England, so in the Midlands, East Midlands. Now, it was assigned to SRAM in 2017. Now, SRAM's complaint is, and I lifted this from Cycling Tips, so that's where this wordage came from. Where's the fucking pen again? Right. SRAM's complaint charges that Princeton was aware of SRAM's patent and continued to market its wheels. It's asking for triple damages for willful infringement and for Princeton to be ordered to deliver up for destru destruction any remaining inventory. Now, in this day and age, when everyone's looking for, you know, environmental credentials, SRAM's gone and taken a gun and shot himself in the bollocks because that isn't really all that good. If you've got, you know, 50 or 100 uh, carbon wheels and you just destroy them, what an absolute waste. You could go and give that to some people somewhere and then use them. Okay, they're racing bike wheels, but having a wheel versus not having a wheel, you know, there's no contest. So, you know, there we go. This is the patent. So the patent number is here. Let's turn the uh, turn back on. That's the patent number. I'll link to it in the bottom. Um, what it covers is, it, when you read through it, it tries to cover off every kind of wavy rim profile that you can imagine. Um, but it's quite vague in the way it does it. But it does give you some examples. And you can see two of these. I mean, this one here, and especially this one here, looks... Um, very similar to the Princeton Carbon Works wheel. Here's another blow up of it, um, showing different spoke patterns as well. Another one there. So, patent, if I show you the. Uh, this is the patent itself. So, you can go through there and look through it. Now, the, the crux of it is the filer, which is Demetrios. Um, it claims this type of wheel reduces drag, and he's put some data in there um, explaining it all, some different sections, and uh, what's that one? Yeah, that's your drag. Um, and also the um, moment of the wheel, so there's less steering moment on it. Now when you go through here, there's just, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I'll come to it in a minute. But um, let's go back to this. There are some issues with it. I mean, the, the, one of the constant criticisms you get is 
patents are often very vague um, and they do this to try and cover off things. Uh, in this case, sinusoidal, which is what the Princeton Carbon Works wheel appears to be, is not explicitly mentioned. And then we come on to the filing and some other aspects of this. And I can't believe this. The, the entire patent does not mention the tyre valve hole anywhere. Now I asked my mates to look at it and can't, couldn't find any description of the tyre valve hole anywhere. And in those pictures that I just showed you, there was no tyre valve showing. Um, so, so, you know, you, you could argue that they haven't defined, and it's an easy argument. You could say, look, my wheel rim has a, a tyre valve hole in it and therefore your patent does not apply. And that's what I would argue all day. And then the final bit is designs are already in widespread use. So let me show you this. So this is the Mavic, uh, what's the word? Um, it's Cerium Elite wheel. Now this was never designed as an aerodynamic wheel. It's not marketed as an aerodynamic wheel. It's made out of aluminium. It's quite a thin section. It's almost box section. It's been welded together, but you can quite clearly see this undulating profile which that patent from SRAM is trying to cover. You can also see the tyre valve, <laughs> quite clearly see the tyre valve. So, um, you know, how many wheels don't have tyre valves? Hardly any. That tyre valve is important in two respects because, two aspects, because firstly, it's there and it's a fundamental feature and in a patent, you have to describe those fundamental features and it's not mentioned. The other is if you took a section through that wheel, and let's just do it in blue. What this patent or their patent infringement is really covering is this wavy profile. Well, the wavy profile in the patent is defined on this point here. So on the very inner rim. So it goes down like that, like that. Now at this point, there's actually an area of nothing. So it does that. So you've got a discontinuity in the in the profile. So if you were to draw a graph, so you've got um, that, that, and then nothing. And then it picks up again. Okay, so if you were just draw a graph of deflection versus, uh, sorry, displacement versus uh, distance around the rim, that's what you get. That area of nothing is an area of discontinuity it's not catered for explicitly inside the um, inside the patent. Now, implied um, things are generally thrown out of patents. So there we go. Right. So what do I think? Where do I think this is going? Well, the verdict. I think I'm pretty confident. Yeah, you know, the, the judge will throw it out because it's vague. It's vague. The, you can't have a patent that's enforced by undulations because if you take any wheel rim and zoom in hard enough, all of those surfaces will be undulating. They'll be under the, okay, there's a difference between 10 millimeters versus one you can hardly see, but it's still undulating. So that's unenforceable. The next one, the tire valve, that is completely unforgivable. How can you have a wheel rim that does not even mention the tire valve. I think it will get thrown out on that regard straight away. And then Princeton Carbon Works can argue, well, Mavic had it before 2014 and you can't have a patent on something that's already commercially available. So, you know, they are the rules. And then finally, SRAM need to explain, actually this is not finally, but SRAM need to explain why it's taken them so long to um, pursue litigation. I think it's four, five, six years, something like that. Four years. Well, the patent was done in 2017, so four years. And the SRAM patent lawyer should be sacked. Right, questions, comments, please remember to subscribe, comment, and lick me on Instagram. Thanks very much, and as always, keep banging your hairdressers.